Okay, look at this complicated piece of work right here. We're going to let f of x equal the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we're going to look at three different points, a, or two different points, a and b. Okay, a is at negative 1, f of negative 1. b is at 1, f of 1. So remember, those are specific points. A function of 1 is the y value. Okay, find the tangent to f in the interval from negative 1 to 1 that is parallel to the secant a, b. What? What's going on? Well, Here's what's going on. Let's graph this guy, and we're going to go from A to B on the x-axis. We're going to start at negative 1 on the x-axis and go to positive 1 on the x-axis. So that's what we're going to do. And, and working this guy out, um, we're going to graph him right here. Look, oh, a half a circle. Look at that, half a circle. Why? Because um, if you just plug in those values, you get zeros, all right? And if you plug in a 0 for x, you get a 1. And if you plug in like a half or a fourth or whatever, it's going to end up making a, a semicircle, all right? And so this is what it looks like. Well, what we want to do is uh, we've got this secant AB. And so what we want to do is find this horizontal tangent line up here, the red horizontal tangent line. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take derivative. And when we take derivative, we're going to have to chain out this guy. So our big problem is a square root problem. That's the big problem. We're going to take the derivative of square root, so that's going to be one half times the stuff, all right, and then one half minus one. So we're going to have one half times one minus x squared to the negative one half power. And then you take derivative inside that guy. So we're taking the derivative inside now of one minus x squared, and that's going to be negative two x. And then put together all the pieces that can go together because we want to work with as clean a, an equation as we possibly can. So the twos actually divide out. And I'm going to rewrite this guy so that we've got a numerator denominator situation. Why? Because I want to know uh, if I'm going to find this extreme value in here, then I need to know what my max or min value is going to, where it's going to be located. And it can only be located in a couple of places, either at an endpoint, one or negative one, or uh, where my derivative is equal to zero uh, in the numerator, or where my derivative is equal to zero in the denominator, which means that the derivative does not exist. So I'm going to check both, you know, I'm going to solve both of these guys out. Um, I'm also going to look for that mean value theorem because that's, that's part of finding that tangent, all right? And, and since we're in the mean value theorem section. Uh, and so when I, when I do all of this, I, it turns out that I get zero uh, for my mean value. So I start checking all these different things out. I plug in all my different numbers. I solve all the different things out and I get zero and I get one and negative one for my three big values, okay, to check. Well, one and negative one are my minimums, okay? There's no tangent line going on there. That's where I get that zero in the denominator. But when x is equal to zero, I, I do have a max value that does make my mean value theorem work. I do get a, a coordinate there of the point zero, 1. And what does that mean? That means that the equation y equals 1 is the tangent line from the interval from negative 1 to 1 that's parallel to the secant. Wow, a lot going on there, and it's just a really cool uh, problem.